Here is a classic pattern of an infarct to a kidney. Uh, grossly, you could see on a cut section that the renal infarcts are wedge-shaped infarcts, and they are anemic, or at least not hemorrhagic. You could call them white, although this one looks a little bit yellow, uh, because they don't have uh, a lot of uh, collateral arterial circulation. They're classically end arteries. Microscopically, you could see in this area of the kidney, whereas you can see some differentiation between tubules and glomeruli here, there basically is a loss of cellular definition. Remember, we call that coagulative necrosis. And in the larger gross specimen, we can see that there is a large area of abnormality in the middle of the kidney, uh, perhaps uh, where there's a lot of loss or necrosis or maybe even scarring perhaps of the cortex. But this is only a regional effect rather than an entire kidney effect. So we have to theorize that it was only uh, the part of the kidney that was supplied by you know, whichever blood vessel goes to, or vessels go to the middle third. Let's look at the heart in, uh, now. And in an infarct to a heart, uh, we could see uh, in the fairly early stages infiltrating of n infiltration of neutrophils and loss of nuclei. Grossly, infarcts of the heart uh, in the early stages can look uh, yellowish or purplish. Uh, with time, they become scar tissue. So if you see uh, whitish tissue uh, regionally in the wall of a heart, uh, perhaps in this transmural or involving the entire uh, wall of the uh, ventricle, if it's really white and gritty, it's probably old. If it's yellowish, it may be organizing. Most of the uh, early infarcts are soft and purplish. So you can go by gross appearance, or microscopic appearances. This one certainly is recent because of the neutrophils and loss of nuclei. To tell you the truth, I don't know what this one is, but I can only see that it's white, and if it's white because of scar tissue, we know that it's old, which means months to years. We talked about infarcts as involving uh, organs or parts of organs. But if you theorize that there was circulatory collapse or inadequate blood flow to the whole body, that's what we call shock. And classically, shock can be divided into inadequate total body blood flow on the basis of cardiac problems or on the basis of sepsis what they call septic shock, secondary usually to bacterial endo or exotoxins, as well as hypovolemic shock, where perhaps there's been no infection and your heart is good, but you lost your vascular volume to a wide variety of reasons. These are the three classical reasons for shock. There's a couple of others I might mention. We're going to look at the morphology of shock and the clinical course of uh, shock as well. Shock is cardiovascular collapse, whether it's due to the heart, the blood vessels, or a bacteria acting uh, in overwhelming sepsis. The common pathophysiologic features are either inadequate cardiac output to perfuse the entire body and or inadequate blood volume. The overall general result is total body inadequate tissue perfusion, or if you want to think of it as uh, inadequate perfusion of vital organs, of course, uh, and ultimately cellular hypoxia, death, and the kinds of things we talked about in chapter one. Uh, shock is very serious, has a high mortality, and as you would guess, total body uh, inadequate perfusion would almost certainly have a fatal fatal outcome unless it could possibly be corrected in only the early stages. In the later, later stage, there's nothing you could do. It is pre-death. Uh, let's talk about the three different kinds of shock. Cardiogenic shock can be acute or chronic. 
type of bulimic shock can be due to hemorrhage or leakage of fluid in other ways. An endotoxic shock, which is the same as septic shock, the number one killer in ICU, is generally the third type. Theoretically, if you had neurogenic shock, the uh, autonomic uh, innervation of your uh, blood vessels collapses for some reason and you have loss of vascular tone. That could be another uh, explanation. And often the term anaphylactic shock is associated with uh, IgE-mediated uh, generalized systemic vasodilatation and therefore increased uh, total body vascular permeability. These can also and usually are or often are fatal as well. But let's go into the three main uh, categories. Why can your heart fail acutely? How about a myocardial infarction? How about a ventricular rupture secondary to a myocardial infarction or other region, reason, perhaps even traumatic, perhaps a significant arrhythmia re resulting in pump failure, perhaps external compression to the heart, pericarditis or pericardial effusion causing cardiac tamponade or significant external compression, or a uh, very significant acute right heart failure with a large pulmonary embolism, which we've just described. In hypovolemic shock, you lose uh, your fluid. In uh, significant hemorrhage, your vascular compartment leaks fluid. In vomiting, you lose fluid and electrolytes uh, as another mechanism for losing massive amounts of fluid. Even with diarrhea, we have massive fluid loss. Uh, that could result in hypovolemic shock too, and it does in many of this uh, fatal diarrheal uh, illnesses like uh, typhoid fever. Uh, burns can also result in extensive leakage of fluid because of lack of things like skin to hold your uh, water in. So these are all the common mechanisms for hypovolemic shock, and any one of them is possible. And the third type of shock, septic shock, often called uh, endotoxic shock, which is usually gram-negative endotoxins, uh, also termed LPS for lipo polysaccharides, because that's what they are chemically. You can also have a gram-positive shock. You can also have shock uh, due to uh, overwhelming fungal infection as well. You know, uh, there's this concept of superdelegates this year with the elections going on, so let's introduce a new concept called superantigens as well, kind of a relatively new concept in medicine. Uh, especially uh, classically seen in the toxic shock syndrome. So superantigens technically are uh, activators of T lymphocytes that induce massive systemic inflammatory uh, cytokine cascades like we saw. Now in septic shock, uh, it's staph that is the ultimate producer of this whole cascade and that's what uh, an example of uh, gram-positive uh, organisms producing septic shock. What are the uh, sequence of events in septic shock? In other words, overwhelming infection, vascular collapse. Well, the first event is peripheral vasodilatation and therefore loss of vascular tone and then pooling of blood and therefore loss of circulation for that reason. And remember what happens with pooling and abnormal flow. The endothelium gets activated. There could be massive DIC going on secondary to the endothelial activation. If you want to think of this whole event as a total body inflammatory response, you can because that's what septic shock is. And we have only a few seconds left. So uh, let's stop right here and we'll talk about uh, some more types of uh, septic and other shock in the next 10-minute uh, batch, and I thank you very much.